Shine. Pour yourself a cup of coffee and tune in to Good Morning Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews. Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Way Pais, Victoria, Hila Maldonado. Good morning. Yeah, so many things. A whole bunch of this, a whole bunch of that. A video that has to be reshot. Ay, ay, ay. Coffee, cold brew, a camera, a mask with a cat on it. So many things, so many things. These are all the things that happen in or around the second largest city's first daily news podcast good morning aurora good morning aurora good morning aurora the time oh oh the time the time is now 8 a.m i'm pumped up monica how you feeling today i'm feeling good i'm feeling good good a little bit tired under the weather but Oh no, no! Let's set the coffee up. Can, can oh, we get yeah. a community Let's get a sip, sip, y'all? Let's, Let's get get a, get, a, get a sip in. Yeah, sip it up, sip it up, sip it up. <laughs> oh man, we're gonna we're gonna power through it today. Uh, as I mentioned in the uh, short description, this will be a short show today. We're going until it's a half show today, guys. We're going to eight thirty. The reason why is because our host has to do labor like you haven't seen. And I mean, since the pyramids were built, so we have to work today. Uh, so we have to wrap it up early a little bit. But we have all the news and topics for you, uh, and I think we're gonna get started real quick with. Uh, I've got Aurora Regional Fire Museum hosting Community Hero Day to come up with, and then uh, after a little bit of this, we'll get some of the local news topics and get those popping off, and then. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Norma Peterson is here. Good morning, Norma and Alyssa O'Cone. Okay, the Aurora Regional Fire Museum will host its fourth annual Community Hero Day from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday, October 2nd at the museum at 53 North Broadway in Aurora. A free community event that features touch-a-truck vehicles from over a dozen community organizations. Additionally, families will have an opportunity to interact with 14 community partners and 11 craft vendors. The Northern Illinois Fire Sprinkler Advisory Board will be on hand with this fire sprinkler demonstration trailer and will be conducting a live fire demonstration at 1 p.m. Okay, uh, the event will include vehicles from the AFD, 
APD, Aurora EMA, NICOR, Ozinga, Groot, Kane County Sheriff's Department, Weston Sons Towing, the Illinois Tollway, PepsiCo, Illinois Army National Guard, and Kane County EMA. How about that, you guys? Okay, can we get a yay for that from our live studio audience? That ain't no button. Y'all think it's a button, but it's not. Okay, uh, what's going on on the local scene? Monica, can you tell us? Of course. All right. So registration is open for the NAMI 5K, a run for mental health. This will take place Saturday, October 2nd, and there are options for virtual or in-person participation. Take part in something fun and motivating. And then the link will be in our chat, which is just NAMI5K.com to register and for more information. On October 19th from 10 a.m. to noon will be a workshop titled Emerging from COVID-19 and Strategic Planning. November 10th from 10 a.m. to noon will be Leadership, Staff, Transitions, and Succession Planning. Both workshops are being hosted by our friends of the Dunham Foundation. The links have yet to be disseminated. Disseminated. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> what? Ow! <laughs> That's the word of the day, y'all. Yeah, disseminated. <laughs> disseminated. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, Saturday, October 30th from 4, 4 to 8 p.m., there will be a great and spooky Halloween party taking place at McCarty Mills, 140 South River Street. Food by Chef Alton, cupcakes by Anna's Custom Treats, best costume contest, and a book launched by our friends Victoria Hila Maldonado and Delis. Uh, Dizalasi Mari. Mari. Yep. Awesome. That's what's up. Come on out and support all of our local friends. That's right. That's right. That is right. Our uh, Mondays mornings take a sip. Thank you, Victoria Hila Maldonado. Yes, that's right. She's the author of great books such as Bartleby the Brave, a great kids' book that's available in English and Spanish. We like shouting that book out. Thank you very much, Monica. Now, guys, tomorrow is Jeanette's planning, but we've got a few things here that are going to be brought up tomorrow. Uh, and there's a story tomorrow that's going to, it's spooky as heck, it's true. It's pretty far out. I'm just going to preface you tomorrow. Um, you know, get ready because it's going to knock your socks off. But uh, a new Greek monument has been unveiled in Aurora and seen as another cultural milestone. Uh, I think we told you guys about this briefly on Tuesday. Uh, but there is at Wilder Park a new Greek independence monument celebrating the uh, Greek Revolution from 1810 to 1840. Uh, city officials, leaders of Greek churches and societies gathered at Wilder Park in Aurora just last week to talk about this statue and to unveil it. It weighs 20 tons. Yikes. $100,000 20-foot monument provided by the American Philalenes Society. <laughs> Stumbled just a little bit, but it's all good, though, because the coffee is just uh, its a short one today. All right. His Eminence, Metropolitan Nathaniel of the Greek Orthodox Metropolis of Chicago, was on hand and leaders of the American Philhellenist Society. Um, yeah, this has been working a long, long time to get this monument up and running. Quote, we approached areas in Chicago and did not get a lot of positive feedback. And the late Mayor Tom Weisner and now Mayor Irvin have just been open arms, welcoming and asking what you need us to do to get it up and going. Absolutely wonderful. The time is now 8.06 a.m. You're listening to Good Morning Road, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. And we have something called. First things first, we have something called compelling music to bring in some breaking news. Come on, man. You can't even get that on MSNBC, y'all. Aisha Saxon's here. Good morning, Aisha Saxon. Anna Sierra's here. Happy Thursday to you. Anna and Sally Bice. Good morning to you, Sally. As we mentioned, guys, we are wrapping it up at 8.30 today because we have to work. Okay. Get ready for Fall Festival, Saturday, October 23rd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Prisco Community Center. 150 West Illinois Avenue, rooms 102 and 103. 
get connected to local resources and aid. Come see what services, resources, and organizations are available to Aurora and Kane County residents. Free flu and COVID shots as well. There are many participating organizations, such as the Neighbor Project, World Relief, East Aurora Counseling, Jen Ingram Art, hey, Alive Aurora, hey. Oh, man, we got a lot of friends in here. Look at all these friends we got. Fox Valley United Way, what is up? Grandma Bears Daycare, Mutual Ground, what the, I can't. There's so many. Monica, can you believe this? State Senator Linda Holmes, oh my goodness. So yes, that's right, Saturday, October 23rd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's Fall Festival. All right, uh, also Pooch Parade, you guys, Sunday, October 3rd um, at 11 a.m. at Phillips Park. Pooch Parade. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wow, Curtis, that sounds absolutely very cool and wonderful. I never heard nothing like that. Well, I heard about it once upon a time, but it was in another city, so it's cool to see a Pooch Parade here in Aurora. Phillips Park is a great location, too. You have the Sunken Gardens. You have a whole lot of land over there for people to play on, families and all that. You can barbecue out there. You can't have glass bottles or containers, but you can do your thing at Phillips Park. It's a great place. Um, so, yeah, shouts out to Phillips Park and Pooch Parade. Get ready for that. Our friend of the show host, Sway Pais, will be pooching it up at the Pooch Parade. Ooh. Ah, our dear friend, Brisa, is here. Brisa, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Aurora. Grace Cornell, what is up? And Anna Sierra, don't end the show early. I know, I know, I know. But interestingly enough, Monica and I were just here chopping things up. And we came up with a, a, a small little idea. Let, let us know what you guys think. What if Good Morning Aurora, what if we brought it back later on in the day, right? Mm -hmm. Like a good evening type of joint? I mean, would y'all tune in? If it was like a 6 to maybe 6.30, 6.45, maybe even 7, and hit y'all with the topics at the late evening, talk about the food, maybe be at a place and eat a burger and give you a little re review of What would y'all think about that? Would y'all tune in to that? Let us know in the chat. The time is now 8.10 a.m. All right. Can we give them a couple more local topics, and then we'll move on? All righty. Saturday, October 30th, from 4 to 8 p.m., there will be a great and spooky Halloween party taking place at McCarty Mills. I said that earlier today. You did. No, it's all good, <laughs> though. You know what? Remix! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> it, hap <laughs> it happens. It happens to the best of us. Happens all right. to the best. October 8th is the date. Bridge Bash 2021 will be a great evening of outdoor fun. This will be from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the venue in downtown Aurora and beautiful Monday Park. Consider a sponsorship for Bridge Bash 21. Sponsorship packages include free tickets for your friends, an exclusive free pre-event, and more. Visit our website at neighbor, neighborproject.us to buy individual or couple tickets. Register to join us live or participate in our silent auction digitally at neighborproject.us or text bridge bash to 243725 fun and fundraising all in one our outdoor life music celebration wouldn't be the same without you and i will be sharing the link with you all for the registration the fifth annual cup sprawl drive will be happening this year at aurora regional fire museum from 5 p.m to 8 p.m on october 1st Music, local vendors, and a food photo booth will be there. Um, this will be an awesome community event. Come support a great cause in downtown Aurora. For more information, I'll be posting that link to our chat. On October 15th, which is a Friday, will be a great night. Our Friends of Mutual Ground will be hosting their black and white ball from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. at Hotel Arista located at 2139 City Gate Lane in Naperville. Mutual Ground supports everyone because it's a black and white ball. All participants, all participants and guests must wear black and white or shades of black and white, including silver. To purchase tickets, I will be sharing that link with you all shortly. All right, all right. 
Yeah, we got links, we got news, and actually, you know what, people, I think they like the idea of a night show. Hells yeah, from Norma Peterson, very likely from Sally, at Anna Sierra said seven, with a, looks like a margarita, something like that. You watched that episode once upon <laughs> a time, because we did do that before. You guys remember, we did a book reading with margaritas. That oh, was nice. quite, yeah, it was really, it was cool. It was a good one. Thank you very much, Norma Peterson, night edition. Looking forward to it. All right, all right. Yay, later in the day, too, from our friend Victoria Hala Maldonado. Okay, guys, uh, the time is 8.13 a.m. Okay, now, uh, remember, remember, oh, actually, let me give a shout out. The Streets Department of Aurora, the city of Aurora, has a great um, assistant director, and his name is Adrian Perez. Right. Yes, that's right. He's the assistant superintendent, excuse me, of the streets division. Yesterday on the city's live, he was featured as part of Aurora Avanzando, a conversation with Latinx leaders at City Hall. It was part two. Maria Lindsay, Sandra Navarrete, Viviana Ramirez, Cristina Trinidad, and Guillermo Trujillo were all featured. And Adrian Perez gets a special shout out. And I'll tell you why. See, this is the kind of... see this. Come on, it's exclusive. What? Y'all don't even know. How do I know? Okay, here's what happened. I'll tell you a story. Dan Barrera is here. Good morning. <laughs> Dan Barrera is going to the ball to support Mutual Ground. All right, much appreciated, sir. We would greatly appreciate that. And you just recently Norman retired, Peterson. so we appreciate your service. Huh? Norman Peterson is going there, too. All right, good to see that. Speech. Good to see that. Norman Peterson... Check out, oh, LinkedIn. Like that good work you're doing. Okay, um, so if you look at the picture of that presentation yesterday and you look at all the headshot photos, the wall behind Adrian Perez, I was like looking at it. I watched him get that picture taken. Ooh. Yep, so I met him. He was in the studio standing right over there mm -hmm. and getting shot up, you know, mm -hmm. and, and making it look mm -hmm. good. And that picture came out great. He's a great guy. And we wish everybody at the streets division of the city of aurora a great awesome wonderful morning and if any of you great folks know adrian perez tell him good morning from good morning aurora all right the time is 8 15 a.m uh deadly counterfeit pills containing fentanyl are now everywhere in chicago we started the week off with this actually on monday and the reason why we did is because chicago is the largest city in illinois and aurora is the second largest city in Illinois. So anything that could affect or does affect uh, Chicago definitely has an impact on Aurora. Not only that, but we are strong supporters of uh, addiction rights and addiction advocacy and addiction help for people struggling. So um, let's get into this story. Chicago's epidemic is taking a dangerous new turn according to the DEA. Um, they have a warning about skyrocketing sales of counterfeit prescription pills containing the deadly synthetic opioid fentanyl. Here's some data, guys. Since 2019, the DEA's seizure of fentanyl-laced pills has skyrocketed in Chicago. Uh, can you give me the uh, highlighter over there, please? Um, about 9.5 million such pills have been seized this year across the country, according to DEA. About 269 kilograms kilograms of suspected fentanyl has been seized since October of 2020 within the DEA Chicago Field Division, which includes Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. Now, mind you, Field Division states their activities aren't just limited to Chicago because the problem is bigger than Chicago. All right. According to Robert Bell, head of the DEA Chicago Field Division, quote, it's everywhere. They're available in street deals for purchase online in schools. It's very scary. Unsuspecting people think they're getting a pharmaceutical grade pill like Oxycontin or Xanax. Uh, the DEA warned over the summer about two Lollapalooza concert goers to avoid uh, them buying pills because of dangerous counterfeits. Counterfeits, excuse me. Last year, there were 912 overdose deaths in Chicago and 1,387 deaths in all of Cook County that involved synthetic opioids like fentanyl. Officials don't know whether any involve counterfeit opioid pills. Wow. Scary stuff, you guys. Really, really, really scary stuff. All right, moving on. Uh, don't forget the Air Classics Museum out there in Sugar Grove has a lot of good stuff going on. Their next board meeting is October 
23rd. These guys are friends of the show. They have new and updated hours, though. They are closed during the week, Mondays and Fridays, Saturday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. They're open, but um, because they've had, had, excuse me, because they've had their activities curtailed due to the pandemic, they have increased and are doing very well run, safe, socially distanced, private and group tours available by appointment. Uh, so shout out to these guys, 44 West 546 US Route 30 in Sugar Grove. You can give them a call at 630-466-0888. Shout out to all of them. Steve Ports, what's up? And if you want to be a member, we have their membership application here downtown at our studio, 5 East Downer Place, Sweet T. Okie dokie. Uh, so Emily says, maybe a hybrid on certain days. I love waking up to your show. Thank you very much. And Bianca Camargo was here. Oh, that reminds me. Yay! Saw some good things mm -hmm. last night at the uh, event for Bianca Camargo. Saw some fly pics, you know, looking uh -huh. good. Look, look well attended, mm -hmm. you know, look motivational. So shouts out. Mm -hmm. um, like to see that. Like to see that, guys. So uh, congratulations. Okay, uh, Stewart Sports Complex is hosting the Ripken Baseball Tournament in 2022. Uh, this is news from our friends of the Aurora Area CVB, that's the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Quote, Aurora and Chicagoland region, excuse me, Aurora and the Chicagoland region is rich in baseball history thanks to two of the most storied franchises in Major League Baseball. Baseball is in our blood here and hosting an event like the Ripken Select Tournament and being associated with one of the greatest players of all time is an honor for everyone involved. We in the Aurora area will do our best to present a first class event both on and off the field for the athletes and their families and friends. That's according to Pete Garlock, Director of Sales of the Aurora Area CVB. Uh, Ripken Baseball is a joint venture by brothers and former MLB players Cal and Billy Ripken announced uh, that it's the first multi-city tour through their newly added Ripken Select Tournaments program. The program includes a week-long event at Stewart Sport Complex to be held July 10th through the 15th of 2022. Damn, we got news until next year. Ain't nobody got news like this. Okay, uh, formed in 1987, the Aurora Area CVB is a private nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting and marketing the areas as an, the, excuse me the area as an overnight destination, increasing visitor awareness and growing visitor expenditures for the maximum economic benefit of our tourism partners. Shouts out to Court Carlson, Executive Director, and James Cardish, Director of Marketing. All right. So the weekend's coming up, Monica. What you what you got going on? What's the what's the plan? What's the plot? What's happening? Nothing much. Nothing much. Just basic chores. Basic chores. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. How about you? Um. Well, we got Saturday. We got uh, Cruise Ocho. We're doing that. Oh, yes. That's right. We got a special show for these folks on Saturday. Uh, hip hop local hip hop star. Cruz Ocho of the Highest Low has a new single out, and uh, he will be on the show. This is his second time with us, talking about that, catching up on life, and seeing how that's going and everything. So tune in, guys. It'll be Saturday from 9 to 10. All right, First Fridays, don't forget about that. That is coming up uh, tomorrow as well. Mm -hmm. First Fridays, a lot going on. A lot going on. Um, we have the schedule, actually. Let's pull up that schedule. Actually, I'll send you. Um, I'll send you the schedule, so you can read it for these wonderful folks. Let's hit them with some uh, local news while I pull up this schedule, though. The time is eight twenty-one. All right. So don't forget about the Citizens Police Academy hosted by the Kane County Sheriff's Office. This free ten-week week course provides first-hand knowledge of how policing works in our community. This is held Wednesdays from October 6th through December 15th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And I'll be sharing that link with you all shortly. Fall Festival is happening Saturday, the October 23rd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come see what services are available to Kane County residents. Tons of organizations will be there such as the Neighbor Project, Jen Ingram Art, World Relief, Family Focus, and Alive Aurora, sponsored by the Fox Valley Park District. State Senator Linda Holmes and State Representative Barbara Her Hernandez save the date. This event is free and open to the public. 
Our friends of the Quad County Urban League are hosting their annual Equality Gala on October 30th of this year. The theme is Transformation, Reunite, Reconnect, and Rebuild. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit the link that I'll be sharing with you all shortly. All right. All right, so got the list of what's happening in Aurora downtown. Hi, everybody at home. Hey, y'all. Yes, that's right. Check it out. Check it out. Our digs have changed a couple times, but we are in here with you guys today. Good morning. Glad that you're all tuning in and, and watching from your lovely homes or home offices or offices if you have to go back to work. Okie dokie. So here's what's going on, uh, different locations for our first Friday. And also, French 75 opened up last night. They had their grand opening, so shout out to French 75. Saw a couple of good pictures yesterday. Uh, looked like it was a decent and well-attended event. So shout out to French 75 located right next door to Aurora Fast Print on Galena. The address escapes me. I don't think it's 75. What would that be? East Galena? I don't think it's 75, but whatever it is, you guys know where it's at. Okay, Gary Brown Art Gallery and Studios tomorrow at 7 South Broadway, the Sundown Light Show. Randy Myers Art Lamps will be turned on at 5.15 p.m. Uh, gallery Night at Artisan Loft Gallery, open to the public, 6 to 8.30 p.m. Super Jumbo, 102 East Galena Boulevard, Halloween show featuring art by UT staff, live printing of exclusive t-shirts, trick-or-treat bags. Aha, 56 East Galena Boulevard, that's Friend 75. Raffles, discounted French 75 cocktails and art. Awesome. Art Comes Alive, we've been telling you guys about that for a while. A teen art exhibition sponsored by Bezel Arts in the Alive Teen Center. That's from 5 to 9 p.m. tomorrow. Um, Society 57 has Ain't No Grave, Black Woman Rising, Fine Art by Danny Larson. Cocktails and Small Bites. So the art scene is thick. Here's the music scene. Altero Latin Fusion has live music featuring Damian Rivera, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. La Quinta has La Sociedad de Paul Singers. Massacred that. Damn, I'm sorry. I know they named Gotta Sound Cooler Than That. Let's try it again. La Sociedad de Paul Singers. Oh, yeah, that's better. That's better. House Margaritas on the Rocks are $8. 7 to 9.30. I know, right? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's 8.25. Can't be, can't be talking about that. Uh, the GAR Memorial Hall, Memorial Hall has Ryan Carney Cell Trio performing from 6 to 8 p.m. The museum opens 5 to 9. Wabonza Community College has Celebration of Arts and Latinx History, a fun and educational night featuring Latinx cultures, games, food, music, and crafts and activities. Free silk screen t-shirt printing from 6 to 8 p.m. 5 to 9. Okay, Simply Destiny has live mas, 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, McCarty Mills, Killer Taste Buds, Food Pop-Up, Beats by NSTO, Featured Artist of the Month is Marco Cardenas. Zen Loft, Studio Open House, Performance by Magnolia, Belly Dance Collective at 7 p.m., Foot Massages, Shopping, Hanging in Hammocks, and more. Damn, 6 West Downer Place. Boy, if you put the margaritas with that yoga in the hammock, ain't nobody leaving. <laughs> Ain't nobody coming home tonight. Mm -mm. Honey, where are you? Oh, man. Put that shit on silent. Oh, we got the hammocks, the massages. Okay. Cotton Seed Creative Exchange has welcome fall with 10% off select items at the shop. Free coffee and treats from 6 to 8.30 p.m. And there's a food truck court as well. Harvey's Firebox, Grumpy Gauchos, On TV, Strawberry Barbecue, Small Cakes, Home Run Hot Dogs, VNA Vaccination Clinic. Shouts out to our friends of the VNA, Karina Suarez Darden. I think she's here in the chat too. Good morning to you, dear friend. Food vendors are subject to change. Please check Facebook for updates. Kinky Boots is going on. Hispanic Heritage as well. Shouts all the way out. The time is 8.26 a.m. Damn, we got four minutes. Holy cow. Sally Bice says, if you're going to broadcast in Aurora, you need to learn a little Spanish. That's a fact. Thank you very much, Sally. You are right. So we got Buenos Dias Aurora. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Second large city's first bilingual news podcast. All right. Perfect way to begin October. You're right, Anna Sierra. Thank you very much. Um, so, Monica, let's hit them with just a couple of more topics to wrap it up with. And then we will let these folks have their day back. All right, on October 2nd from noon to 5 p.m., our Friends of Talented Tent Social Services are hosting a holiday craft vendor fair. 
This will be a fun event. There's a $25 vendor fee and the location is 205 North Lake Street. To register, uh, the link will be provided in our chat. The portal is now open. If you are a small business owner in Aurora, you may qualify for a B2B back to business grant money from $5,000 to $150,000. With many of our industries still recovering from economic hardship, the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity aims to help Illinois businesses as part of the American Rescue Plan. Our trusted community partners of Obanzi SBDC stand ready to help you. The link to the application is will be provided on the chat for help navigating the program, contact our listed partners, which will also be shared in our chats. That's right. Share it in the chat. The chat is like a big handshake. That's what it is. It's like, hey, chat's like a party. Like, hey, girl, you in here too? Oh, snap, good morning to you. Good morning. Okay, um, so. This was good. As I said, it's 828, guys. We have to wrap it up. Tracy Duran is here. Good morning and happy Thursday to you as well, Tracy. Emily says the county line will be playing Grateful Dead covers outside Zen Loft at 5 p.m. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. Good to know. Uh, and tomorrow is going to be another episode of Jeanette's Planning once again. Um, yeah, this was fun. So if you're just tuning in, guys, as we mentioned, we have to wrap it up a little bit early because we have to work. That's right. See, and let me tell you something. Hold on real quick. You are not that. Because that. here's the thing. Now, you and I talked about this briefly, I think, on the very first day that we met. Not even your first day. Like, the thing about the show is it's not just we're not just telling people stuff. Mm hmm. We're not just giving you news, mm -hmm. right? I mean, what we're going to be taking part in at 9 a.m. is something that is a community benefit. I mean, we actually, this is a show where the things that we tell you about, we might be volunteering there. We might have a table and booth. It could, it could be that. It could be the email address that you link and register to we might have created it. Mm -hmm. You never know. That's why it's the second largest city's first daily news podcast. <laughs> All right. Don't forget the Aurora Air, the Aurora League Women Voters Civic Education Series event today. That is right. Thank you very much for that, Dan Barrero. Thank you very much. Good morning, Jim Mendoza. The time is 8.30 a.m. and we have to wrap this up you guys but i want to let you know to have a wonderful day a positive day a helpful and motivated day and uh, we will see you guys back here for jeanette's planning tomorrow but but that thing about the chat and the later in the afternoon or the evening show oh stay tuned stay tuned stay tuned facts <laughs> take care of yourself and each other Thank you.